Time and time again, we've seen how a fictional setting gives a non-violent object an ulterior motive as a weapon. Take, for example, the umbrella, and its sibling the parasol. One is meant to keep you dry in the rain, and the other prevents you from getting burned by the sun. Really, you can just cross over the uses of each, a parasol basically turns into an umbrella in the rain, and vice versa in the sun. Both are great in defending you from nature, but looking at video games, movies, and more, you'll see how these tools are great for the attack as well. So for this video, I'll be covering how these household items with similar composition make some characters a threat in a fight. I'll be judging these characters based on how their umbrella or parasol helps them fight, its uniqueness, and how stylish the characters look while using this unorthodox weapon. And to help me find the right characters in this video is AT from Umbrella Corp. An expert in the field, as his channel name implies. Not Umbrella Corp, I represent Software Agents Corp. I'll have you know that we don't make evil pharmaceuticals. Oh, I contacted the wrong corp. Well, regardless, you'll be helping me count down the top 10 characters that fight with umbrellas or parasols. Number 10, Chuck Green from Dead Rising 2. While the appeal of the Dead Rising franchise is all of the unexpected weapons you can pick up and create with what you would normally find in a mall to fend off a zombie apocalypse, I'm discussing one of the weaker items. Dead Rising 2 gave main character Chuck Green the ability to pick up those parasols that malls put up for aesthetics. Just fight off the undead with a parasol, why not? It's not designed for fighting like later entries on this list, but at least you get some utility out of it. The parasol can be used as a battering ram, charging your way through hordes of zombies, covering large areas to your left and right. It doesn't kill any of them, so it's a temporary solution, but it puts that flimsy parasol to good use. I bet that quaint parasol thought it could just sit in the background looking pretty. Well, think again. Number 9, White Rabbit from Spider-Man Comics. She's a villain who based her motif on Alice in Wonderland and carries around an umbrella that can shoot you as her primary weapon. However, it does not shoot bullets like the umbrellas of other comic book villains. No, instead it shoots razor-sharp carrots. She essentially created an umbrella gun that can shoot knives, but she thought knives weren't rabbit-themed enough so she sharpened a bunch of carrots and somehow created technology that can shoot them out of an umbrella at a lethal speed. I don't think there's anything else I need to analyze. What do rabbits like? Carrots? Great, put it in my weapon. She may lack actual superpowers or more legitimate advanced technology, but she commits to the whole rabbit persona, which I have to respect. Number 8, Setsuka from Soul Calibur. I have no choice but to draw my sword. Isn't Setsuka kind of pushing it? I mean, she doesn't fight with her umbrella per se. She pulls it out during some of her moves, but I don't see her bludgeoning anybody with it. Instead, she fights with the blade hidden in its ferrule. I think. I th ferrule? Ferrule. That's today's vocabulary word. Well, that's why she's not as high on the list. The parasol is mostly a weapon of deception. Her primary weapon is known as an Ugetsu Kaguchi, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and there's a whole bunch of technical stuff on what the names of the sheath and blade are. The point is, the weapon is not complete without the Umbrella Soul. Do you expect her to just carry that tiny sharp blade in a normal casing? She fully commits to her design. Her default weapon and outfit combination is stealthy and classy, since you might just assume she's a high society woman out for a stroll. Nothing suspicious here. How on earth does her outfit stay up in combat? It was the 16th century. No one cared about wardrobe malfunctions. There's always the Mary Poppins outfit. Setsuka's backstory never specifies how she got her weapon, but it is speculated that her master passed it down to her. He was killed by the samurai Mitsurugi, and it would make sense for her to seek vengeance for her master with his own weapon. And that's her main character trait, revenge and umbrellas. She even acknowledges this in one of her Soul Calibur 4 intro dialogues. 
Hey, at least she knows her character role. Setsuka didn't appear until Soul Calibur 3, but her character design and weapons are such a natural fit for the series. Sometimes I forget she wasn't here for the first day of school. Caliber. The fight was decided even before I drew my blade. Number 7, Kagura from Gintama. Kagura is part of the Yato clan, who are talented martial artists, but they are made weaker in the sunlight. So they carry parasols to keep them from being harmed by said sunlight. And guess what? That parasol doubles as a weapon. So in a comedic yet badass twist, Kagura's parasol functions like a standard shonen sword and can work as a gun by shooting bullets. It's hard to say where she ranks on the hierarchy of Umbrella users since the Umbrella is only one of Kagura's many cool techniques. Despite being an iconic part of her character design, many of her hand-to-hand -hand abilities have a bigger impact in her main fights. Like she can stop bullets with her teeth, no Umbrella required. She also has this Berserk mode that strengthens her already skilled martial arts techniques, so her parasol takes a back seat when fighting like this. Long story short, she's extremely cool but not as reliant on her umbrella weapon as other entries on this list, which is excellent for her overall character development, but not so great for a higher ranking in this video. Number 6, Ryoga from Ranma 1.5 now this umbrella gets right to the point. Brute strength mixed with using the umbrella's physics. The umbrella itself does not hold many surprises that are not caused by Ryoga himself, but its most notable trait is its weight. It looks pretty normal, but it's seemingly impossible to lift by anyone else, except when it's not, because of unexplained reasons or comedic effect. Regardless, Ryoga can amazingly lift this impossibly heavy umbrella with just one hand, which complements his character well. The weight of his umbrella is indicative of his immense strength and slower, more brutish fighting style. And even the umbrella has meaning. It's not just some random weapon. Being splashed by cold water turns Ryoga into a small pig, so carrying around the natural defense for water is a clever idea even if the plan is not always successful. But hey, neither is Ryoga, so I guess that's another similarity between the wielder and weapon. Number 5, Kirby. When Kirby absorbs an enemy floating down on a parasol, he gains the ability to use their parasol, because Kirby cannot just pick up a parasol and use it like a normal person, or whatever he is, a uh, marshmallow. He has to suck up, digest, and spout a parasol out of his hand. This parasol hits enemies as hard as Kirby's other common abilities, so it's basically as strong as a sword or pure fire. Plus, those weapons do not have the added effect of allowing you to gently float to the ground, which makes it easier for your enemy to reach you when you could just fly over them and land faster. Okay, maybe we do not highlight that attribute of the ability. I like when the parasol is used to attack, it sprays little water droplets when it spins. Of course, that means someone was using this parasol as an umbrella, or the ability name should not be analyzed. The best part of this parasol is that it takes its primary function to the extreme by blocking anything heading towards Kirby, including cannonballs and living enemies that get killed as if Kirby just swung a mighty weapon. Smash Bros. was kind enough to make this parasol an item in Melee, but it loses its luster when it can't obliterate enemies in one shot. But hey, if you ever wanted to see Captain Falcon softly float to the ground, then I have some good news for you. Number 4, Rachel Alucard from Blaze Blue. Rachel Alucard sneaks her way onto another one of your top 10 lists, huh, Mr. Top 10 List? Well, technically, but the first time I spoke about her, the segment was about Rachel herself. The second time, it was about her frog, George the 13th. And this time, her entry deals more with her otherworldly cat, Nago. He's a big transforming cat that turns into many tools that help Rachel fight, from cannons to swords to you name it. 
However, he primarily spends his time as a parasol to go with Rachel's aesthetic of being a high-class lady, and because Rachel's a vampire that needs the sunlight blocked. And while Nago does a good share of the fighting, Rachel still deserves praise as the Umbrella Parasol wielder, since she is needed to give him commands in battle. Rachel is like 200 years old, she has the body of a 12 year old, and the voice of a 35 year old. So basically she's another character in an anime style fighting game. Since Nago is in his umbrella form the most, you see how well Rachel uses him in that form by making her jump more floaty and giving herself more air when zoning or even gliding with the wind that seems to only exist when I put in a button command on my controller. He also makes for a good shield when defending, and I'm not surprised that Rachel would use her ally as a living meat shield considering her personality. She is so mean to the other Blaze Blue characters. Any opportunity she gets, she condescends them, and the player. I shall do my best to use small words in hopes that some of this information may permeate that echoing cavern you consider your mind. But you know, I'll give her this. Her anti-air umbrella uppercut is pretty damn cool. So, uh, any bets on the next list I make that Rachel Alucard appears on? I'm tired. Rachel wins. Number 3. Parasol from Skullgirls. To quote Miss Fortune's special intro dialogue with Parasol, I, I, damn it, your name's already a pun. Parasol is a princess of the Canopy Kingdom and leads an army in hopes of destroying the wicked Skullheart, which she has a legitimate beef with. It turned her mother into the Skullgirl in the past, and the Skullheart is alluring her younger sister to use it and become the next Skullgirl. Luckily, Parasol can take on any Skullheart related threats with her weapon that is not your standard weaponized umbrella. It's a living umbrella named Krieg that cries napalm. The living part of Krieg's character does not give him a personality since he never speaks and only attacks with Parasol commanding him. However, she will tell him to cry on command when in a fight, since his tears put semi-liquid bombs on the field that either detonate on their own or when Parasol elegantly slams Krieg down. Krieg can also be used as a sword since he has a sharp end, and for defense. She can even spin him like a drill and open him up to deal some longer range damage. While this weapon seems like it has everything you would need for a fight, Parasol covers her bases by also carrying a gun and a full army of soldiers known as Egrets that occasionally will come out for the assist. Parasol's younger sister named Umbrella also has a living weapon, being an Umbrella named Hungren who likes to eat a lot and seems more aggressive than Krieg. That's only my assumption though since we never got to see Umbrella and Hungren playable making her a somewhat tragic character that can only live on in Parasol's story mode. Number 2, The Penguin from Batman. Batman's longtime enemy Oswald Cobblepot is the gentleman of crime, maintaining his high class status as a businessman while he commits heinous acts of villainy. While he is not one to always take the field on a crime spree, when he's confronted by Batman, he has a few tricks beyond covert escapes. His umbrella is always loaded and not with the same weapon. The standard one can shoot bullets like a machine gun, but it can also dispense gas with varying effects, fire, blades, and really anything the writers feel would be convenient to make the penguin a threat. It even has the power to let the penguin's portly body float like a feather. There's also the Hypno Umbrella from the Danny DeVito Penguin. Certain iterations of the Penguin are goofier than others, so how outlandish these tools can get depends on the universe. Though regardless of the era, whether we're talking about the hammy Burgess Meredith Penguin or the darker New 52 version, his umbrella is one of the most unique wildcard weapons in comics since you never know what danger it can produce. Alright, I could not resist putting number one on the thumbnail since her parasol power is well documented. 
You know it, assuming you looked at the thumbnail, and I know it of course, so let's get up that silhouette since number one is Princess Peach from Mario. The lengths to which Peach's parasol goes to defeat enemies is somewhat astounding. Peach's parasol appears infrequently in the Mario canon, but its inclusion is always welcome, and its uses are varied. It was an equip item in Super Mario RPG, her floaty jump in Super Smash Bros., a melee weapon with a mind of its own in Super Princess Peach, and in Super Mario Sunshine, it protected Peach's peachy skin from the unkind radiation of the sun. To elaborate, Super Mario RPG had the parasol as a purely offensive weapon that quote, inflicts serious pain. This was the first time our parasol was weaponized, so it slowly developed into a more fleshed out tool. Basically every iteration of Peach after that would use the parasol to float or glide in the air, giving her more precision when landing. Outside of uncontrollable cutscenes, this mechanic is most prominent in the Super Smash Bros. games as her up special, which propels her northwards. Then she floats down gently or fast if you decide to dive and not be a sitting duck for your opponent. My favorite part of this attack is when you use it as pure offense. She pushes her opponent upwards and scrapes the opponent against the parasol until she's at her apex. It's not very effective, but you feel the power of the parasol when it makes contact. Her most powerful parasol was probably in Super Princess Peach, with her sentient parasol named Perry, who was never in another game after that. Besides the standard hitting and floating, Perry allows her to pick up items and enemies with precision and throw them with ease. However, its most unique and probably most horrifying ability is that Peach can duck down on a defeated enemy and Perry will eat it, which heals Peach. The parasol consumes a living being without leaving a trace and somehow liquefies them or turns them into a form of energy that can heal injuries. Are they still alive when Perry does this? Is Peach using some inconsiderate monster? Am I making a very simple mechanic as dark as possible? Yes to that last one. Regardless, this was the most sophisticated Peach got with her parasol, and if we ever see some form of a sequel, I'd love to see how much further they could take these parasol mechanics. Also Daisy, playable Daisy would be nice. So Peach closes out our list of Parasol and Umbrella Fighters. Now what did you think of these choices? With such a unique weapon, are there any wielders of the Umbrella that I left off this list? I'm pretty sure Ibuki's Forward S and Pocket Fighter is a kendo stick and not an Umbrella. It's just B-roll, don't pay attention to it. Now where was I? Yeah, let us know about any other Umbrella or Parasol users we left off this list. There was a Pink Floyd concert in 1972 called Umbrellas Required. Just let me finish the outro. Anyway, thank you all for watching, stay dry or shaded, whichever version of the Umbrella Saw you prefer, and we will see you in the next video.